Hi, I'm going to show you how to forecast in Excel. We are going to look at some forecasting functions and some of the forecasting capabilities in Excel 2016. The first thing we want to do is look at our data. This is a real world data set. This is uh, users to a website. So we'll be able to predict or forecast what the future trends or repetitive path would be. So the first thing I want to do is visualize our data. We have our date column here, which is going to be our x-axis, and our users, which is going to be our y-axis. And this is what time series data is. We have our time column that's going to run along the x, and our values. doesn't matter what this value would be. So I'm just going to highlight that, go over, click Insert, go over, and let's see our data we can see that our data definitely has a repetitive pattern here. And that repetitive pattern is known as seasonality. So we know our data stops on August 5th. And let me just run up here and let me pull this down so we can look at it a little bit. So our data stops on August 5th, which was yesterday. So we know we can see this pattern. It looks like every week we have this pattern. So let's forecast out a bit. I'm going to pull the date range out a little bit. We're going to go all the way down to the 15th. And the first thing we want to do is use the forecasting functions in Excel. So I'm going to start my forecast. Uh, you can definitely start it right under here under this empty column but I'm gonna start it next to that and I'll show you why so the first thing we're gonna do is go up a little bit and we're going to start our forecast here on the next column you can definitely start it directly under your data but in order to visualize that a little bit better I'm gonna put it on the next row and you'll see why so I'm gonna start with writing out the word forecast and you can already see we have a host of functions and we're going to explore what each one of these functions does so we have the simplest is forecast but you can see there's an exclamation mark there because if I hover over this this is no longer a function that is promoted by Excel because they have better functions now so we know that our forecast has seasonality, but the most basic function we have is the linear forecast. And this would be if you expect your data to just continually go up or continually go down on a very predictable path, almost like a slope. So we're going to use this function first and see how well it fits our data. So let's go to linear. We're going to click that and it's going to ask us for our X. So we want our predicted X, the one that does not have values on it. We want our known Y's and you remember our Y is what's plotted here. So let's get all our Y's, comma. We want all our X's and then boom, we can hit that. And all we have to do is double click that and it will drag down. Let's name this next column forecast linear. Maybe give that a little color. So now we have this forecast and the reason I put it on this column because when we plot it it will be an extra feature as opposed to just being a, as opposed to being a continuous part of our visualization. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to take all three of these rows, highlight them. We know we're going all the way down to the 15th, which is our predicted future values, our forecasted future values from the 6th to the 15th. I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to go over, click this, and let's see what we have. I'm going to pull this down here, and we can see that forecast is here. And that is not a good forecast. So we're going to call we're going to call this forecast linear. So we know we don't want to use these forecasted values. We should use a different 
forecast function for that. So I'm going to do that. We know that our forecast has seasonality in it, but let's use the next function in our list. We have this ETS function, which means an algorithm called triple exponential smoothing that Excel uses to have better forecasts. And you can see when we use this function that the inputs are definitely more detailed. So there's our forecast. We have a target date instead of our X, same as the previous one. Our target date would be the date in the future for our data set. The values are here, so we know we can highlight these. These are our known Ys. We have our timeline, which is our known Xs, which are just our dates. And now we can look at the seasonality. So we know that every week we have this pattern, but let's just see what the function does, to see if Excel is smart enough to guess the seasonality. The next part of this function is data completion, and these are all optional. So if you have holes in your data, it will tell you what to put. So you can put a zero, or you can put any value you want, or we can use an aggregation to fill that value. So I'm not going to concern myself with seasonality, so I'm just going to close off that function for right now. And let's see what we get. Let's Complete that down. Let's go up here. Let's call this ETS forecast. Give that a little bit of color. And let's plot that. So let's control and click our values here. And then let's go over to ETS and click that. So we're going to visualize that with our line chart. And wow, we already have a better prediction. We can see that the seasonality by Excel was definitely understood with that new ETS algorithm. So let's just call this ETS forecast. Now, this data was very predictable because we can see the weekly change, but I'm going to show you how to calculate the seasonality, and it's also with those forecasts. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to write seasonality, and I'm going to put our seasonality value just in case you wanted to find it. So we know that we did the triple exponential smoothing forecast, the ETS forecast, but we can also get a value here it says it returns the length of a repetitive pattern a repetitive part pattern is seasonality so I'm gonna click that and it will give us the seasonality value if we don't know it so we need our values and we know our values are here all our known values comma we need our timeline and we don't need data completion or aggregation because we don't have any holes in our data. So I'm just going to click that. And wow, what do we have? We have our seasonality value, which we could easily see in our data. So the next thing we want to be able to do is we know this is a forecast. It's not exact. So we should know what the confidence intervals are. So let's get our confidence interval. So all we're going to do is go over to our forecast functions. And we can see that we have our target value, our confidence level, and everything we need to get our confidence level. And let me just show you what that says. So if I write forecast and I hover over, it returns a confidence interval for the forecasted value. Our target date, let me click this function, is here. Our values are here. And our timeline is here. And then 
we don't need to add the confidence level because I want the default, which is 95%. So I'm just going to hit that. And now we have our confidence interval and we can just double click that down. And now we have our confidence. So this, for this particular date, we can go 135 above or below for our confidence bands. So I'm going to write our confidence level here. We know that what it is. Put that some color here. We have our confidence. And then let's use upper bound and lower bound for our confidence bands. And I'm also going to keep that pink. And let's see that. So how do we calculate our upper bound? We know that our predicted value is here, our ETS forecast. And we know we want to add a confidence interval to get the upper bound. And then I can just pull that down. I can go over here and I want our lower bound, which is our predicted value minus our confidence. And now I have our lower bound. And we know if we put these on different rows, we can visualize better. So I'm going to take and visualize our date, our values, our forecast, our upper and lower bound. Go to insert. We're going to put in our line graph. And now we have a new visualization. Oops, new visualization here, which is forecast with confidence and of course this is not the prettiest visualization and of course we could go in and we could definitely change what this looks like so that doesn't look that great but we have our upper and lower bound here now it's not the best visualization, but let me show you how we can really make this a stunning visualization using some of Excel's features. So if we go over to our home tab and we go to data, we can see forecast sheet and this creates something that's very special. So I'm going to just take my whole forecasted table here. I don't need the seasonality. I'm going to click forecast and look what we get. We get an in it, we get a much better visualization. Of course, we could have fooled around with it to get that. And we also have options here that allow us to change the confidence interval, which we know was default at 95 but we can change that to 80 we can change the periods here we can change what we want it to be missing if we had any missing values we can change the seasonality which we see that it was detected at seven so this also includes a very great feature for you to visualize your forecast I hope that helps. Thank you.